Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to a little bit of a new thing that I'm trying out. Uh, don't have a name for it other than the round table. It is, it's not a round table, it's a square, but uh, decided to call upon some of the coolest citizens that I know, gather us all in a room here together so that we can just yell at each other and like talk about Star Citizen and hopefully not get too off the rails. Uh, but my friends, Morphologist, Level Cap, Gaming, Avenger One, and the Astro Pub have decided to join me today so we could talk about the state of Star Citizen right now with 317.2 just going live. All kinds of fiascos going on, new content, and all that jazz. So, oh, and my dog's outside. So, why don't we start off here by uh, just giving a thanks and a hello to everybody, and then we'll go like clockwise. Tell everybody who you are, and I don't imagine anybody not knowing, but tell them who you are, what you do, where they can find your stuff, and then we'll dive right into it. Morph? Hi, yeah, I'm a YouTuber slash streamer. Uh, you can find me on Morphologist. Uh, sorry, youtube.com slash morphologist. Uh, same on Twitch TV slash morphologist. Yeah, I do Star Citizen content. Cool. I'm uh, Level Cow Gaming, and I um, have a YouTube channel. And I've been doing lots of Star Citizen lately. Occasionally FPS stuff, but I'm, I'm deep in the weeds with SC right now. So come on over, check it out. I stream also. A1 teaches me how to fly a little bit. So it's good stuff. Uh, hey, I'm Paul, the Astropub Shelly. I've got a longer title, but I'm not going to say the whole thing. Uh, I run a uh, YouTube and YouTube and, and Twitch channels, uh, the Astropub on Twitch, the, uh, the Astropub Live on YouTube, and the Astro Historian on YouTube, which is just, just covers my lore, uh, covers Star Citizen lore. I also talk about Star Citizen in general and play the game and do other games as well. But yeah. My name is Avenger1, and I kill stuff. And I also instruct on PvP, and I run a Twitch and a YouTube as well. Kills stuff. Putting it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for coming today. Welcome to the roundtable. Uh, this is going to be hopefully not too much of a train wreck. I don't know. We got, if we get into lore, I feel like Astro Pub will take us away. We get into combat. Avenger 1's got us. So we got we to gotta try and tread lightly on some topics here. <laughs> Um, but we were talking about earlier how the new the new or uh, the Orison events going on. So CIG just released the newest dynamic event, right? And I think everybody's gotten a chance to try it. I don't know about on live, but we were talking about kind of like the balance of it and stuff. And I think that's a good place to start. Not not quite the uh, the wipes yet. The the economy. We'll get to that. But first. How has the event been treating you guys so far? If you gotten to try it out, any good? A lot better than live. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I played with Morph during live, and uh, it looked like an eight-bit game where he would sort of appear in one place and then teleport somewhere else and kind of just like incrementally appear around the map. Uh, now it looks relatively smooth. I dynamically grouped up with like ten other guys, and we were running through and killing ai it wasn't super smooth with the ai and stuff um mm. but for the most part it worked right up until the end when the last bad guy didn't spawn and i was hearing from other people that there were certain issues from time to time where things wouldn't spawn in or it at least that's how it was perceived where like a, a bad guy wouldn't spawn but i think people have been able to complete it more or less thematically it looks really cool visually it looks really cool um but something that we were talking about earlier, too, is I think the um, it, Star Citizen's challenging in space. It's fun. The AI are a bit more interesting, at least in space, than I think they have more tools to scale their difficulty by adding more of them and, and doing other things to make it more challenging. But on ground, on foot, the AI are like, I mean, it's like easy mode on some on any shooter. It's very unchallenging in that regard. Yeah, and they're pretty like scattered it feels like the ai when you're fighting them they kind of come from every mm -hmm. direction we were you were saying uh do you more yeah. i think you were who's, mentioning who's strategizing the defense plan on orison <laughs> it's like all right guys spread out so you're in small pockets and uh do not group together to fight them at any sort of choke point or any just make sure you're you're spread out so they can fight you in ones or twos at a time 
It's the same they, they guy the, that does in a horror movie where they like, okay, we got this creature. Everyone split up and go by yourselves up. in these dark alleyways. <laughs> Pick I, I, a was, different I was gonna say it's the it, it's the it's the uh, the the guy the, the the guy who trains all of the ninjas and uh, the the evil ninjas in kung fu movies who all come one at a time at the at the bad guy at the, the the good guy you know just just sit around wait for them to come in yeah. you know it's the same same strategy strange yeah. strategy you know, like oh that guy got cut in half I better run and and take his spot <laughs> yeah. but only one at a time <laughs> it's also kind of funny because it's literally just a war in this in this urban area between civilians and a gang. <laughs> like if you mm. break it down, just Stanton's not really that safe of a, of a place. You know, uh, you guys tell me it's high security, but what is this? Just fighting. It's going to kill its tourism economy, man. They should have, they should have a follow up to the siege of Orison, which is Orison's tourism economy dying. And then drops. like the whole place becoming dilapidated. It's almost like that <laughs> well, is part of the tourism. <laughs> Come fight pirates. <laughs> <laughs> not to, not to get too far into lore, but this is actually something they've been trying to they've been trying to like integrate with the lore. Like, there's been a rising crime rates in Stanton, and the reason why they've in the lore and the reason why they have rising crime rates in Stanton is because players, um, but also because uh, the Nine Tails. They've been trying to build up the Nine Tails as this like gang that's slowly been working its way up from when it first started in Stanton to being this huge threat. Um, mm. so at least in lore, that's the way it's supposed to come from. So, so is, is nine tails supposed to be kind of a main faction more so than somebody like say Xeno threat from pyro or something like that. Nine tails, like the go-to gang in Stanton. Yeah. They've become the go-to gang. In Stanton. There are other gangs, but they're the go, they're, they're, they're the, uh, go-to gang right now. That's why you see them everywhere. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when I ran through the event, um, I actually didn't have too many problems with players coming in and, killing other players or uh, like griefing people, I guess, for, for no reason. But I have heard some complaints about it. And I feel like I've also heard that there was like an, an uh, illegal side of the mission. You could actually sign up to be part of the team that's working with Ninetales to kill everybody. Have you noticed anybody actually taking that sort of a role per the game? Or is everybody just coming and killed people? No, there is no mission. That. Yeah, there is no mission to join the Nine Tails. No? There okay. should be, mm -hmm. but there isn't. The, the way you can help the Nine Tails is just by basically uh, trolling players, going by and stopping killing them it. from completing the mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate um, because they do talk about like trying to get players to do more of that criminality stuff, and it feels like this event would be really cool if we had a better situation to do PvP with the event because like. There's a lot of stuff in there to play with, and the NPCs are kind of dumb. <laughs> they don't make use of it. Hmm. It, seems like, it seems like that's where the challenge for most of these events is going to come from, is other players, right? Because, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just the ground level stuff. They have to make it easy enough so that your average player can get in and not get frustrated by getting dominated. So anybody with decent fps experience is going to come in and be like well these guys are not challenging at all because i place first in in Warzone every game so i'm you know uberly fps guy so none of this is gonna be challenging to me um so yeah the only challenge from an fps admission i imagine is just going to come from other players or just some crazy strength in number situation which i don't even know if the the servers are capable of handling i'm actually yeah i was, I was gonna well, I, I will say though, if if you are by yourself and you, are, and one of the big elevators open, it is pretty difficult to kill them before they kill you. Um, you kind of have to run away for a second and and shoot them one by one. I had an FS9 with one of the when one of the doors opened up beside me when I was walking past, and there was like six or seven guys in there, and they immediately started shooting at me. So it, it yeah, it just entirely depends. But otherwise, hundred percent level cap is right there. They're really not that challenging. Um, especially by themselves. I mean, they don't, they don't react particularly quickly. It's only when you don't see them. And that does happen a lot because they do end up in weird places uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. Like cats um, and, perched up on the... Yeah. <laughs> freaking, yeah. Yeah, so they, they might, like, you might go, you just completely overlook them because they're in a bush or they're behind the bar or something and, and you didn't see them because they kind of blend in, but... You do Other have to wonder if the, because I found that the reaction time with the NPCs was super inconsistent. It was mostly mm -hmm. terrible, and on a very rare occasion, 
they'd be like shooting you the second you turned a corner. And I don't know yeah. if that was because maybe they they were uh, not seeing the geometry I was hiding behind and already setting up and targeting me. And it just so happened that as I turned a corner, that's when their animations or their AI synced up and started shooting, you know? So it felt like they were reacting quickly. Um, but I, I do wonder if it's like long-term server meshing solution of like, hey, we're going to have more servers dedicated to AI so they can react quickly and that kind it's of thing, rate, you know? isn't it? Because it is. tick, like yeah. you can literally yeah. like you can like you can do this. Take a knife and just run circles around the NPCs, and then you can just run around and knife them. Because yeah. by the time they track you, it's like you're here, but you're really here, and then you're there, and then you can just kind of mm -hmm. run yeah. circles around them, right? That's why they're so easy. Because if the ping, if the tick rate of the server was high enough that they could actually react and shoot at you, the NPCs would be probably pretty dangerous. Because the, mm -hmm. their yeah. accuracy seems to be pretty all right once they actually lock onto you. Yeah. Or their yeah, wall, that's, that's, their that's wall the hack. issue. That's the that's mm. the issue. It's like most of the time when you see when you see like AI uh, in Siege of Orison, if like here's the test: go up to a group of AI, stand there for a couple seconds, then walk away, and then come back. The second you come back, they'll instantly shoot you. But because mm. but because it takes them a while, that tick raise to to, to, to to them like, oh wait, there's somebody here, and then having a reaction. Uh, because if you, you, that's often the times when I got in trouble with Siege of Orison is because someone sprinted by like an open tower and then activated those AI. And then when I came around the corner, it just like, bup, 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 just because like, oh, someone was already here beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, but I think that's that's the solution is like things like the PES and server meshing would would help remove, like help improve that right now. It's just no matter and that was at 50 players like it didn't even matter how many how many players there are it's just that the, the, the uh, tick rate is kind of garbage so yeah um yeah. Level no, no. go ahead more sorry i was gonna say um one thing though that i think that the better server performance is highlighted is i think that there are some flaws with the way the ai is ha has been designed um the particularly i encountered this with like some of the outposts they, they don't seem to see you from distances that you'd think that they could see you, and they don't engage you quickly enough. I think that some of the um, the ease in which that you can kill them could maybe be mitigated by writing them as being able to spot you from further away. Like, I don't understand the complexities of programming AI in line of sight and tracing what if there's an object in the way or not, but I, I certainly feel like um, they don't react like you think they a human would, would react, and it kind of takes you out of the immersion a bit. Um, they, you think the guy in the watchtower, for example, would be able to snipe you uh, it, the moment you peek your head over the uh, the hilltop, which is only like 100 meters away. Uh, so I don't know. Well, I, I think that maybe we'll start to see them iterating on this more once these issues become more apparent as I, they yeah. fix the servers. I'm I'm fully on board with you there, because one of the things that really bugs me about the AI is you that you don't have enough uh, sign of their reaction. Like you don't know. They don't, yeah. they don't give good signs of saying, hey, I know that you're you're over there like in the dark corner and I'm going to shoot you. They just kind of stand there, stand there, stand there. And the server updates them and they turn and one shot you. <laughs> and you're like, OK, well, yeah. that was a fun uh, battle. You know, yeah. actually, it's it, also it, not it, like, oh, sorry, just to like add on to this mm -hmm. idea as well as like they're just walking around sometimes. Like I went into the, like this really cool setup, like um, fancy restaurant and the guys are just like doing patrol circles. And I'm like. It's called the Siege of Orison. These guys are under attack. We're in the middle of a giant battle. Why are they casually doing like little patrol routes? It it feels like we should be on like major blockade battlefields, right? Where it's like they've set up, they got tanks, they got bunk, they got like all this stuff. They made makeshift bunkers and like walls and fortifications and defenses. Mm -hmm. And we should be fighting them in these intense combat situations as opposed to walking around and finding unresponsive AI. Uh, cause most of the firefights I had were not firefights. It was me killing AI. And on occasion they would return fire if I missed a guy that was hiding in a bush somewhere and then he'd start shooting, you know, but for the most part, you have enough time to kill a guy, kill his friend standing next to him and then kill the third guy behind him before any fire starts coming your way. And you're just like, and it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like any sort of FPS experience. Uh, it feels like target practice, really. Very, a very mm -hmm. calm and yeah. civil yeah. siege. But, yeah, <laughs> but level cap you yeah, indeed. of of the group here you're the person that i think of having the most experience at least publicly with fps games um obviously the immediate answer 
to how the Star Citizen FPS experience compares to something like, say, 2042 or Warzone is like it doesn't compare. The, the polish isn't there and all that kind of stuff. But do you see any basics that are kind of leading in that direction? Do you feel good about the FPS and the direction it's going? Um, I think the the weapons in general, when they're not like glitching out on reloading and weapon swapping being kind of rubber bandy, the weapons themselves feel okay. I mean, certainly there's some outliers, like certain guns that I wouldn't use or whatever, but like the standard P4A iron stuff, it feels decent. I haven't played around with attachments too much. The game desperately needs some sort of shooting range module where you can just load up play with some guns, practice your aim, throw some AI out on a shooting range and like practice engaging certain targets. Um, I think they've got a good foundation from that aspect. From the AI aspect, um, you know, one thing that the latest Battlefield game has like shown is that uh, they've been backfilling the servers with AI. So sometimes you could join a 128 player server that's like 90% AI. And those AI are, as much as I hate fighting against AI in multiplayer games, they're a thousand times more responsive and uh, challenging than the ones that we play in Star Citizen. Obviously, Star Citizen's got a billion times more stuff going on on the back end, where Battlefield's like specifically designed just to handle this combat scenario. So, you know, I'm not like complaining about the tech differences, but I am just pointing out that the AI in a game designed to have semi-challenging FPS AI is far more competent than what we're seeing in Star Citizen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the main downside from like the actual like player versus player competitive side. Uh, I don't I don't even think the game's really in a position to begin balancing the weapons and stuff like that because like for the longest time sniper rifles were just like a novelty, right? Because yeah. there's almost no point in using them. I mean, I'd argue there's still almost no point in having a sniper rifle uh, in the game because there's no real long range engagement scenarios that appear other than ones that you maybe might make for yourself in like jump town if you lay down out in a field and try and snipe some guys just for fun, right? But for the most part, you're like, yeah, P4 AR or the like high capacity LMGs are like, the way to go and that's that's all you have in terms of weapon variety and stuff so we're not even in a place to start testing out the balance or how fps combat really is going to work until the game starts giving us real attack and defense scenarios that players care about you know where you're like i need to use the most effective weapon to protect this thing or attack this thing that i possibly can then you're going to actually start seeing players figuring out what the best weapons are and how the fps tactics work but for the moment it's just like target practice with NPCs, you know? Yeah. Another anecdotal reminder of just how much work we have ahead of us. <laughs> ah. Well, you also got to remember that there's likely, because if you read a lot of the Squadron 42 uh, monthly reports, they, they've been doing a ton of work on AI in Squadron 42. But because it's in Squadron 42 and not Star Citizen, it doesn't get, it doesn't move over. Right, so, right. Um, and so, yeah, so also that AI is not based on tick rates, right? So no. like when it's well, all it's all local based. Oh uh, yeah, it's tick rate, but it's based on whatever your computer yeah, your can local, handle or because it's built built with the same structure. So it's it's effectively the same game. It's just the difference between your tick rate being instantaneous in squadron versus like mm -hmm. sub sub one cent one one for 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 uh for Star Citizen is the huge right. problem. So. Yeah. Uh, I want to come back to that, actually, the, the the balance of Squadron 42 versus Star Citizen in terms of the development. But first, let's talk a little bit about the uh, player cap increase. A lot of people are seeing this. It's the first time we've seen the player count go up since, what, 3.0? Like 2018? It's just, it's mm -hmm. just so nice, especially without any perceivable um, decrease in performance. In fact, 317 to... I don't want to jinx it, it's only been one day, but it has been running better for me than recent previous patches. Are you guys feeling good about this? Do you think, um, mm -hmm. I guess for everybody who's kind of listening to the fact that this is the first increase in five years, we all know what the answer is, but do you see them taking another five years to do another <laughs> player increase? Or do you think this is a sign of kind of the near future? I'm going to step in on this one because this is something that's that I've talked about a lot with my community because it seems, a lot of people seem confused. One of the big things that CIG wants to do is increase the number of players as much as possible because um, when 318 hits, when PES is installed, that will be the basis of the shard system. So 
um, they want to have as many players per shard as possible, which means you have to have as many players per server. Because the I believe the max cap of players that can be in any one shard is going to be uh, the amount that they can get into one server. So if they can get 200, 300, 400, uh, more than that into a, into a single shard by 318, they won't. But I mean, I'm sure they'll, they'll get as high as possible. They're going to try to do that because when they start getting to server meshing, it'll become a lot easier for them to, um, to, to increase the player caps even further if they need to, especially when it's the dynamic meshing. So it's a good sign because if they can already get 100 people in the server, that was their base shooting rate. If you remember that they were like, oh, we're shooting for 100 players per server with, with 318 or with, with, with persistent entity streaming. And they have it without persistent entity streaming. So it's a good sign for, for future things. It's good to hear. Mm -hmm. More players, more content. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, th you think they're going to try and bump it up again before 318 comes? Yes. Well, not before 318. No. But I think we're going to get... See, like, Astro Pub's na like, nailed it, right? Because if they can get X amount of players in the system of Stanton, right? Whether it's through all the updates and all the, you know, all the, um, what, what can I say, uh, optimizations for networking they can get, then when persistent energy, energy, entity streaming comes out, Jesus, um, it's just going to be that much better. Because static meshing, we know, is coming out, and that's, you know, I'm not a network programmer, right? But, you know, you might have 200 people at Grimhex alone, and then you warp somewhere else, and you've got 200 people at Port Alsa or 200 people there. So they might, you know, it's going to, you might not have 200 plus people in one place at one time, but you're going to have this giant sea of people that you kind of travel through the universe and you're always surrounded by people basically. Right. And that's something really exciting. Yeah. That's mm. go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I, I think that the really important thing that, um, that they need to have done that they need to start doing and what they are definitely now doing with the server, um, uh, server cap increases is working on network performance for single server performance because um as you were saying paul uh the and i think this really leads into server meshing server meshing's total cumulative cap for the entire meshed environment will only be as much as the single shard uh, is capable of holding and the reason for that is because you need to allow for in the static environment the entire population of the server moving to one area for an event so if one server shard can only handle 100 people, even if you have four or eight total meshed servers in an entire, you know, meshed environment, um, you'll probably only still have 100 people if it's 100 person per 100 people per shard, because those 100 people can end up being in that one shard, and then the game will crash. So um, they they, we, they definitely need to test, and they, I'm sure they're aware of this. They're going to need to get as many as they can to a single. Um, server now granted when when they do move to a, a mesh in, or a static mesh environment one shard's going to be handling far fewer entities because it's only handling i think half the system because they said four i think they said four servers two for stanton's two for pyro so it's only going to handle um like half the load it is right now but we don't know really and i'm sure they don't even know actually how many more players they're going to be able to handle with that fewer entity count but I'm very curious to find out. I think this is really good news that we're seeing this now because I knew that they were going to have to work on this net coding before we even got the server meshing. Because if the single server can only handle 50 players, the server meshing is not really, really going to increase the server cap that much. Yeah. I think it's incredible too. Uh, just like, it, not only is this like the first time we've seen a player count increase since what you're saying, like 3.0 or some a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not only double, but they're like, hey, uh, if you need more, we'll bump it up to 140 randomly. You know, like there's people in like servers that were almost three times the previous player count. So it's very impressive in terms of like, it is. I mean, like how often do you double like a player count in any game, you know, where you're just like, in oh, look, we found a way to optimize things better. It's especially it's kind of incredible, especially a game like yeah, this. I mean, it, it, it is quite astonishing given the pace that star citizen has been developed and now like you know there's caveats to everything they're working on squadron 42 but what we've been able to see is tangible content and progress has always felt rather slow to see a jump like this is is rather jarring actually you know to have tech work so well on the first try is uh, the last time it happened was was uh, object container container streaming which came out ahead of schedule 
And I don't even think that was a as a big of a difference for us when it first came out as this is. I mean, this is a very tangible difference. Now when you fly around, like my experience has been most of the outposts I go to, most of the stations I go to, I'm running into people, which is just amazing. And, and, and you know, <laughs> like 50 more players is huge. It does make a mm -hmm. huge difference for the experience of the game. Yeah. yeah, my first time logging in, somebody was like attacking me right away. I don't think they knew <laughs> who I was. They were just like, hey, there's lots of people. Let's shoot them, you know? Like, Did I, you kill them? Like, is this Avenger one? No, I, <laughs> had to kill them? I didn't have any guns on my ship. I was like flying to go get like some upgrade stuff or whatever. But yeah, it, you, yeah. you mentioned that. Like, I, I was doing a, a wreck mission just because I needed, I, there was no missions that I wanted to do. So I did a wreck mission. And there were like two other people who showed up like randomly showed up at the same wreck. It's like, oh, okay, I've never experienced that before. Another player shows up for a, a wreck, like a wreck recovery mission. Usually mm -hmm. people don't even, you don't even see another person at another outpost, let alone like these random places you have to like slow boat to on your own. There, there are two other people. It's like, oh, okay. And that's uh, just going to get more and more and more of a thing. And yeah. That's the exciting yeah, part. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I, I think it's, it's also starting to highlight some of the, some possible weaknesses. I mean, it's so early in this, player increase cap experience i mean we what we've only had for like a week including ptu maybe a little over a week um like the 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 amount of missions that are available and the locations for those missions are actually quite limited and so you know i wonder we haven't seen this yet i wonder if it's going to start detrimentally affecting how many missions you're able to take because so many of them are being taken by other players i don't know it kind of seems like uh you know, if somebody's there taking some of the resources you're looking for for the mission that you have, it could get in your way. I had a, a kind of experience like that going and doing some of these uh, box delivery missions. So, I will have to see. I think it's it's early to say. I, I mean, like the experience so far, to, to go back to your question, I think has been really positive for me. But there's a lot of questions still. I think that will that will only be found and uh, answered in time with uh, with these increases. Yeah, it's but definitely isn't that a. Go ahead. Isn't that a quanta thing that'll that'll fix those issues? You know. Yeah, that's, like that's the, that could be a I mean? year away. The it, quanta, as far as the I understand, is a long time away. So yeah, but. so they they want to make obviously. Um, if I mean, I think everyone's probably already aware they want to make the quanta inform dynamic mission locations and points of interest. But right now, all of them are static and hand placed. So. Unfortunately, we are having that issue, but in the future, yeah, it's supposed to alleviate it because it's supposed to be a dynamic thing that just happens and then, you know, that it's already laid out and it's going to spawn in this place in the planet that it's never been there before and you'll go there and yeah, you won't run into anybody else. It'll only be you mission. Yeah, so the the player increases is, is good and like the next up, it's it's cool to see it because we really weren't expecting something like that in a 317.2 patch of all things and we all know that 318 is pretty significant in terms of the back end tech and also some of the main features we're getting. Um, so like the next year overall with PES coming in 318 with uh, server meshing and 4.0 possibly being in the next year as well. And honestly, a lot of kind of mystery about what else might be going on in between those two updates. How are you guys feeling about the immediate outlook of the game? Do you think they're still working on a good path in terms of squadron or uh, god in terms of star citizen considering how much of the work is still going into squadron since i since, think uh, yeah. I'm, uh, i was gonna say i jump in and say well we should have more answer this question because everyone shits on more for saying <laughs> that this this game did not gonna have any 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 content which is oh, always boy. Always, always, always dumb to, to 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 shit on more for for saying the the facts of of what was happening yeah. right when it was released look but, so I mean, here's the thing. I think that it's really easy to forget sometimes just how many things are missing from Star Citizen. But when you really start to break it down and all the professions and all the different intricacies of those professions that have been discussed over the years, you realize that there's a massive majority of stuff that that is just not in the game. So to say that because this year we're getting some really important tech and quality of life updates um, is is, is a big step forward, I think is misrepresenting what a big step forward should be. I mean, I, I think we need to look at the big picture and really ask what what is actually a big step forward. And I think that getting a new star system out of the hundred that they've talked about, I think that's when you constitute as a big step forward. Just saying like, oh, we have a player in cap increase. Yeah, it's cool, but it's not really more gameplay. I mean, necessarily. Yeah, it makes the existing gameplay better. I think that's definitely undeniable. 
but we're not getting new gameplay. I mean, it, there's still there's there's not like a lot of time sinks in the game. There's there's not really um, a lot of economy sinks in the game. Um, there's not really a functioning economy. There, uh, there's there, we, we we can't hold land. There are no stakes. Um, th there's still so many things missing from the game that actually make it a, that can make it a, a game. Uh, that you know, I, I still feel that this is not really the year for Star Citizen. I mean, if server meshing comes by the before the end of this year, I mean, I guess yeah. On a technicality, you can say okay, we got a big step forward at ha. the end of the year, but it's going to be PTU. They said PTU, mm, yeah. Yeah. no promises in the live. So, um, and again, I'm not yeah. even sure when this thing goes to live. Uh, when we do have Pyro, how much more gameplay are we? actually going to have yes we're going to have a new star system but if it's only more space to explore with very little actual content to sink our teeth into other than just to look around the cool things it's not very much different than say them adding a bunch of rivers on the planet yeah it's really cool to look at and i will definitely go check out those rivers but once you look at them you're like all right well i guess back to doing bunker missions yeah Let's yeah river video though, the past man five years that was some that was seven minute, minutes of titillating content, man. Just like, tell me more about the tell me more about the rivers. I want to know. I I really, uh, I really liked it's that. It's really cool. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. But it, that's just the timing of it was um, comical. And that's bit. kind of the <laughs> like seventeen point two. What rivers? Yeah, but that's kind of the thing is like a lot of the features morph that you talk about that are they're steps forward, but they're not like the big ones that you're talking about. They feel super exciting when you consider the actual production and development of the game. But when you yes. consider like the playing and enjoying of the game, you're like, oh, there's there's like little things everywhere that are missing that kind of bring that whole experience together. So I get where right. you're coming so, from. So like th this is what I, I, I try to like bring things back to for people to try to frame this in, in a way that I think is is be easier to understand. For the people who are following this project right now, you are a niche community. The reason why you're interested in this whole conversation is because you're interested intensely in the development of Star Citizen. But I will say that the vast majority of people are, you know, part of the, the citizens network, like the people who are, who've bought packages or are potentially interested in Star Citizen don't care about the development. They only care about, uh, you know, the bottom line. Is there something fun to do? Can I go and do the pew pew? Can I do it yeah. right away? You know, can Tomorrow, I can I yeah. go find a cool spaceship yeah. for my friends? I don't care about the technology. I mean, I'm just speaking from their perspective. I just care if I can have fun. And right now, and you know, there's not much difference from today, um, from last year, other than the increased player cap. I mean, that is a big caveat. I think again, it's super early. I think it is going to change the the experience, but ultimately we're still we still have the same mission set. So yeah, I mean <laughs> I hope that helps clarify it a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And um, I'd like to, like I said, go back to talking about kind of, I wouldn't say the elephant in the room, but definitely the thing that every discussion keeps coming back to, and that is Squadron 42. It's mm -hmm. a much more important thing, development, developmentally speaking, for them right now. Uh, it's taking a lot of focus away from, from Star Citizen, even though most players don't even know what Squadron 42 is. Do you, <clears throat> is it, does it make you at all nervous uh, how the view of Squadron 42 is starting to develop among people who are who are new to the game? A lot of people are coming in and they're like, hey, you know, I don't know what this game is. I don't care about this game, but you're taking all the money that we're putting in and you're putting it towards this game. Do you think, like, what kind of position does that put them in? Do they need to rush on Squadron 42 to kind of get away from that? No, that no. would be a terrible idea. That would be a terrible idea. <laughs> Squadron is the only way they can prove that they can make a game. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's and and even a, a decent, even a, a moderate release of Squadron should make more money in 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 one release than CIG makes in a year. So you know, selling ships. Just 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 a good a decent halfway decent release. So now. Um but yeah, I do think they're I I think they're creating the problem for themselves right now because mm -hmm. uh most of the money coming into the game is for the dream of the persistent universe. The vast majority. Mm -hmm. Star Citizen hasn't raised nearly $500 million uh, because of the single player idea. People are like, yeah, single player seems cool, but that's not bringing in 500 mil. 500 mil is coming in for the dream of owning your own base on a planet in a, in a 
universe that has a hundred different systems, you know, and have has all these amazing features that everybody's waiting on. And I mean, I think we all know that a, a significant chunk of that money is going into Squadron Forty Two right now. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely a debate to be had about that. And of course, there's crossover components, right? Like they're developing the Odin system and all that within Squadron 42. So it's so a lot of that content could be coming in. But a huge amount of that content also is exclusively for the single player, right? Like it's just going to be in that game. And the fact that this is an open development process, right? They're trying to be as open and sharing with the community as they possibly can be. What do we know about Squadron 42? We get an email every month that's like, uh, recorded some more motion capture scenes for some, and you're like, okay. We're still working. What is that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, did this, did that. It's a checklist that means absolutely nothing to us. And I think they need to find some sort of middle ground where they can share more of that with the community so that it doesn't just seem like, hey, PU's on the back burner while we work on squadron 42 uh and take all the money that you've been investing in the uh, for the idea of the pu and put it over into the game that uh we secretly care more about or you know who knows or that we're we want to focus on right now yeah and it's just yeah. like they need to they need to give us more there's a way to not spoil squadron 42 and still show us more it's like the vertical slice was a very cool tease they could show us some environments. They could show us some weapons. I, you know, just give us little snippets of stuff. I, I think, I think they're maybe too worried about spoiling the game that they're they're creating this sort of vacuum of content about it, and they're trying to like let the the smaller team working on the PU. Uh, entertain us enough over the years and like don't worry guys we're working on all this cool stuff and it's like give us more teases of squadron 42 bring some of that stuff over into the pu i don't think i don't think you need to save the idris i don't think you need to save the javelin i don't think you need to save capital class vandal ships for the single player for the single player to have these wow or exciting moments like i mean inject Give me like a roaming vandal fleet that'll come into the PU. You know, like why is all that stuff hidden and saved for Squadron 42? I feel like the longer Squadron 42 takes, the more annoyed people are going to be that all that content is behind this sort of locked door for the persistent universe, right? Yeah. Um, it also. So it's like if you're not going to add it, at least tell us about it. Tell it, show us some more stuff about it, you know, like on a regular basis. Because if that's where the majority of your dev, dev work is going, then we should be seeing more about it uh, as opposed to all the like this week in star citizen stuff being like, here's river tech, you know, it's like, that's cool, but I'd like to see the vandal fleet video or something, you know, like show me something cool. It also kind of builds up the hype a lot mm -hmm. for squadron and, and it might set expectations really high all this time that they're developing it and saying, Oh, we don't want to spoil it. Oh, we don't want to give it away. Oh, it's going to be really good. Like we don't want to, you know, impact that experience. They, could be setting it up to be too highly uh anticipated i i think that i think that's there's two sides to that equation though and you can look at other games right is like um take cyberpunk 2077 probably the most anticipated game like ever like the cd project reds stock value like plummeted after the game came out because people were just like omg but the game made a stupid amount of money to the point where they can like keep working on it refining it forever if they want so it's like do you worry about hyping too much to the point where yeah the game can never live up to your expectations but also you sell a billion copies of it because the hype is like through the roof like i don't know there's like that equation and then the money you make from selling all those copies you can put back into the game and making it better um yeah i don't know it's an interesting they had a reputation though, you know, CIG drops yeah. the ball on this game and like, uh, I don't think they can save themselves after that. After nope. 10 yeah. years going into it. Yeah, that would be rough. They're not going to drop the ball and uh, Squadron 42 not. is going to be really good. Right. And here's I, the I thing. think it will be yeah. people. People always remember like The Witcher 3, for example. Right. We all remember that game and we'll continue to remember it because it's a masterpiece. Right. The taste of quality lasts through time we all still play games like or can have time from the n64 those games have quality that will transcend time so if they take their time 
and they make a great game with enough emotional impact with the characters and the story and the gameplay, then it's going to carry into the future. And then they can start pivoting towards PU stuff. And how I feel about like the way they're developing stuff, like it's not optimal for the fans because we always want more. We always want to get involved. Like that's the way it is. Right. But the truth is the tech that is required to get the persistent universe imagine like the thing that we all want you know like to own stuff on a planet and shit like it's a very specific skill set to develop that kind of technology right whereas like if you put 400 people on squadron 42 you know a good majority of them might be artists and, and other disciplines and they're not all network programmers and 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 you know riggers that are doing animations right so there might be 400 people working on squadron 42 but there might only be like 20 or 30 guys that are like really doing the heavy lifting. And then you got 20 or 30 guys doing the heavy lifting for the PU too, even though there's a big difference between how many people are working on it. Right. And let's be honest, like the core tech for star citizen with the network stuff, like the uh, persistent object container streaming and the server meshing stuff, like that's some heavy lifting stuff. You know what I mean? Like that takes time and effort. So, you know, if they keep on telling us like, Pump the brakes. Like, I also agree with level cap. Like, I would like to see a little bit more. Like, I don't understand why they haven't given us the updated Vandal ships for the ships that people own that are Vandal or the Asperia ships. Or yeah. why haven't we got the, why haven't mm -hmm. we got the Mark, the Mark II Hornet body, not the Mark 7A? But okay. like, why yeah. can't the Hornet just model get updated? Right. Like, little things like that. I'm kind of like, come on, guys. Right. Like, you know, um, I agree. But when it comes to Squadron 42, like, it's going to be really good. In my personal opinion, I think it's going to be really good. And I think it's going to be worth the wait. Yes, it's not going to be... I, I'd rather them not say... Like, not tell us a lot. And then when it comes out, let people experience it and, and really enjoy that story and, and not have any of it really, you know, kind of soiled. Whereas if you kind of come up from the opposite perspective where you kind of share, overshare everything, then people get all nitpicky. Like it's the internet, right? Like people get nitpicky. They're like, I don't like this. And, you know, and then you open up for like preemptive criticism that's just not ready yet, right? Because when it's a single mm -hmm. player story, it's like a piece of art. It's like, it's not ready yet. You know what I mean? So like pump the brakes, right? When it's finished, like the painting is finished, then you can show people and be like, what do you think, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's cut, you're halfway through and like you're missing a lot of context, you might be missing all this other stuff, emotional impact with the characters, then people are going to get the wrong impression, right? So it's like when it, it's like taking a, a, a pie out of the oven too soon and be like, mm, it's not cooked. It's like, well, of course, you put it in there for half the time. Like, let it cook, let it do its thing. Mm -hmm. And yes, I agree. I would love to have it tomorrow. But the truth is, it's better to wait and then to have it be in a condition that is enjoyable when it comes out instead of making the mistake that all these other big companies do like ea games and all these other developers which is the whole reason why people back star citizen is to get away from that kind of silliness where people are like push it out push it out and it's, it's not ready it's it's crashy it's buggy it's missing a whole bunch of stuff like come on right and when it comes to like playing star citizen that we have right now i agree with morphologist because morph's got a really good point like hey guys like we got some pretty basic stuff here that needs to get ironed out like let's go and i agree right but i think there is a lot of content that sometimes people are missing that they could be experiencing now that they just don't you know what i mean now the general audience like the general public they're they're not going to touch the game until it's basically quote unquote released you know what i mean like when the mm -hmm. game is green light and they're like okay hey, time to pew pew like you can log in and it's all good to go and you know you're not falling through the floor or going through the grim hex elevators like when, when that stuff is you know in a few years hopefully uh when some of that stuff's ironed out yeah then star citizens time in the limelight will be ready but in order for us to get there we just kind of have to basically smile and wave at this point right yeah, yeah. but i would like to see a yeah. few small things like i don't understand why they don't have log off uh, like a log off punishment system in so that if people are shooting yeah. and being criminal they can't just like oh i'm being shot at time to log off it's yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah yeah they right? certainly could prioritize some specific features that would just make our wait yeah because bounty better. hunting like player interaction is what makes people coming back right if they got to get the yeah. they god they got to get the transport slash like i item system in the game as soon as possible they, we got to have boxes of stuff that cost money shipping to other places and some kind of basic rudimentary economy in place even if it's a placeholder right so that 
piracy becomes an actual legitimate slash lucrative thing to do if you can pull it off. Like we need tractor beams to stop ships from moving so we can board them. I mean, CIG even had a boarding ship sale recently, the Centurion. What was the ship that was the board? Legionnaire. Legionnaire. Right? Yeah. So they, they're thinking about it. So if we get the boarding in the game, we get the tractor beams to stop ships so we can actually board them. We get items slash cargo that's worth stealing for pirates to do so it's worth it and we get log off traps in place so that when the pirates do decide to start doing pirate stuff the the security mm -hmm. forces can get there in time and save them if that just that gameplay loop in general gets 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 finished which i don't think would be too hard for them to do like that'll Famous keep words. people excited for for a while yeah. i mean that yeah, that I, alone will be i mean those one. things are some of those things, at least, are are there. We know that they're being worked on. The SRV is in production. Um, I, I can't speak really to Quantum. I honestly wish that they would talk to us more about Quantum because it feels like they're very wishy-washy about that. But also then, um, what was it? You, you mentioned uh, tractor beams. You mentioned, uh, oh, the cargo refactor is also another reason that we might be able to see a little bit more value brought up in transporting stuff and putting what you want in your ship and stuff like that. But the economy is is a big one that's missing that's gonna i think that's gonna mm -hmm. drive a lot having valuable minerals and, and materials like you said having things that are valuable in bulk versus valuable in small amounts that kind of diversity is definitely something that we need in the game sure Be before we before we move on to that topic because I, I i did want to touch on the squadron 42 thing before we we get too far off of it because I, I, I as level cap was talking i had uh inter an interesting uh, idea that came into my mind and i, I think it, or, or maybe it's like an epiphany not not exactly it's something i just kind of already knew um uh, but now i realize this has heavily influenced the way that we look at squadron 42 and that's the 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 way that star citizen is advertised cig doesn't spend any money on advertising um either squadron 42 or star citizen all of it comes through organic advertisement through content creators and the only thing content creators generally create content on is the persistent universe, the universe where we're playing with other people. And so naturally the people that are attracted to Star Citizen to fund it right now, the vast majority, are all people who are interested in that experience and not in Squadron 42. I mean, they may even know nothing about it. I know for a lot of the people who have gotten Star Citizen from my videos and used my referral codes and stuff, they've told me that um, you know, they came in because they watched the 890 Jump video or they came in because they really liked the new player guide and they wanted to just be in a cool universe where they could walk around and do all this cool stuff. They had no idea that Squadron 42 even existed. So they're, they're, I think just by the way they're doing the advertisement, they're creating this side effect of uh, a kind of animosity towards Squadron 42 because people don't really understand why all their money is going towards that when they paid for this cool experience that they saw on YouTube or on Twitch that they really wanted to have. Um, but anyway, that I mean, that, that's basically. I would, I would it. argue that that started maybe even before like, or YouTube content started promoting this game. Because I mean, mm -hmm. like even in the stretch goal phase, right? Like the stretch goal phase, those goals were not Squadron Forty Two goals necessarily. No. Those were Persistent Universe goals, and that was before there was like regular Star Citizen YouTubers, mm -hmm. you know. So that's I would true. argue that the interest for this game has from the start been heavily weighted in the persistent universe yeah. with squadron 42 being kind of a fun novelty addition to that you you uh, say that but but i think a lot of earlier backers also they, they were drawn to chris roberts vision because they were fans of previous work that he had done like i'd never played that stuff and like i came in because of the the universe so i think like for the original backstarter uh kickstarter a lot of people came in because of the squadron 42 idea as well as the persistent universe but i, I know what you're saying because yeah i think that the having the multiplayer environment is i think more attractive to, to i think a wider range of people but i think mm -hmm. at the beginning maybe it was a bit more even than it is right now because right now we've got there's just nothing to cover with squadron 42 i mean for the past three more than three years we've got nothing on it i mean you know board still you know he does some coverage of like the uh, progress tracker stuff that they do and stuff and and some people are interested in that but that's not really stuff that's appealing to a wider audience right now so i think it really is um the pu and Torada's video that went viral with everybody coming in which was amazing and you know like yeah. captain burke's like lighting up on twitch because you know he's having this 100 100 player batter Pe people are interested in star citizen because of that stuff right now uh not because of squadron 42 but yeah, I mean, it doesn't really change the fact that we got to wait for it. And I think, you know, w what A1 was saying, we got to wait 
uh, they, they need to wait to it's, it's, you know, it's fully cooked. So it's a really great high quality experience. I think that's hundred percent true. It needs to be that way. It just kind of sucks to be in that position where, you know, we're waiting on some important tech. They're focusing on squadron 42. It is what it is. We can't do anything about it. It just kind of sucks. <laughs> it really, it really yeah. comes down to their communication, which CIG has always, yeah. it's always been their Achilles heels. Like the communication is such a complex topic because it's, it's 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 a weird situation to be in where you have to tell everybody everything you want to know they want to know everything that you're working on but also you don't really want to blow things out of proportion if they don't need to be so this is kind of going into the next topic hope i'm not cutting off anybody's squadron thoughts but um this is an interesting one that i really wanted to discuss with you so the communication about this game is best surmised in my opinion by the whole bed sheets fiasco and that is that like that's a I'm detail sorry, <laughs> you, you missed that one that? were you were you under back in <laughs> there was it was they, big for like three days or something on Reddit, oh I gosh i still hear about it i still hear about it on, I, my, I, on my twitch stream youtube comments I, I, everywhere i'm gonna cut in a, a little bit because I, I know where you're going the, the the problem i think is there's less communication and more to do with that cag is just basically doesn't have a filter half the time. They'll yeah, just say yeah. things because they can. And, and, um, and the reality is, is I don't think that hurts the game nearly as much. The bedsheet thing, people still bring it up, but almost no, everyone forgets about it. There's yeah. like four people who, who just like, who remember that because they had that list. <sighs> they have, I don't know if you ever played, <laughs> if, if you ever played, um, um, if you ever played, what's it called? Uh, uh, Warhammer total, total war. The, the mm -hmm. dwarves have this book of grudges. Like people have their book of grudges. They write down every single thing that CIG has done wrong for them as if it's like a personal <laughs> slight. And, and I get it. Some people are very, very interested in those sorts of things. But at the same time, there like, are some of those people. Yeah. That's the thing. At the same time, most people forget these dramas within a week. But the, you know? I mean, I, uh, I think this goes back to Star Citizen is uh is just easy fodder for those people looking for quick hate clicks because everybody knows the meme of Star mm -hmm. Citizen being a scam. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got Kotaku and a bunch of other like, you know, low bar YouTubers just going in for that clickbait. And it's easy to 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 pick out one line out of a really long list of stuff that they're doing and say, Hi, what are they doing here? Look at them yeah. wasting yeah. their money. Yeah. So that's and it I, right there. I think it was blown way out of proportion. I yeah. think that's that's really what I want to get at is that CIG has always been of this kind of balance of we got to give as much information as we can we put out these videos you put out these monthly reports we put out these posts in the forums and a lot of times they'll put something in a monthly report or a post that's like one line like you said but that one line gets hyper focused on because it sounds weird and then you, if you take it out of context it sounds even more weird right like bed sheets are a thing that obviously need to be worked on for a game right i mean if i'm going to go into starfield and there is a function of going to sleep. I would like them to work on the physics of the bed sheets so that they move when I get in them. I don't want to glitch into the bed. It's not important, but CIG puts it on the monthly report and it makes it seem important. And that kind of gets more focus on those things, I think. And, and it's probably one guy too, like what for working yeah. on it for a couple of weeks or something. It's not even out of the 800 people working on it. How much of that of an impact is he actually having on the development? Right. You know, so, then, I mean, what it's, if you're and like, as an animator, you know, <laughs> what if you're like day one and you don't sleep with bed sheets on because you need to get out of bed so quickly so you can engage people <laughs> while they're your shit? You know, I mean, you have, have time to sleep. Bed sheets. You need bed sheet <laughs> options, okay? When I, I throw them, when I lay down, I want that list to be at least ten options, right? Like she's half on, half off. Do I want them on the floor? You got to like, be the only. Do I want a Tempur-Pedic pillow or like the really fluffy, you know, I mean, like you got options on there. And the point is, is we really need all of that stuff in the game. <laughs> uh, bash preferably, and preferably before we get gameplay as well. Oh, uh, yes. 100%. <laughs> Y'all bash on bed sheets, but I'm telling you, man, after a long day's work of shooting people, you're going to love the fact that those bed sheets are doing whatever they're doing. Just saying. As long as yeah. they're 800 thread count minimum, I'll, yeah. be, it's, I'll yes. be very happy. It's easy to blow it out. Give me some the problem is, is like, <laughs> nobody would care about the bedsheet thing if they were consistently delivering gameplay content into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, the yep. fact is, mm -hmm. is there's not there's big droughts of gameplay content. There's huge areas for them to work on that are not dependent on these underlying tech hurdles, right? Uh, we've talked about this a lot in the past, I think, on just about 
with probably just about everybody here on the podcast in like a one-on-one situation where it's like we could have all these missions all these things all these tools that are already in the game there could be a dedicated like a large dedicated team of people working on siege of Orson and like content or uh, expanding the current missions in the game the dynamic missions the pirate missions all that stuff making them more yeah. interesting and there's no tech limitation to that right now we have all the assets They've proven that they can do they can do more advanced stuff to create more gameplay, more immersion, more stuff. And then they come out with a thing that says bed sheets, and people are like, "Screw your bed sheets! Give me, <laughs> give me shipping! Give me, give me yeah. something in the game that I've been it's, waiting for for five years." You know, so that's yeah. why it gets people blown see, out of proportion. People see bed sheets, and then they go, "You're working on bed sheets while I'm falling through the planet." <laughs> you know, yeah, and and we all know we're all smart enough to know that like. The person who's working on bed sheets has nothing to do with the people stopping you from falling through the planet, but the average person doesn't. And it gets back to what Morph said earlier, which is like there are two types of people in general who follow Star Citizen: people who are insane, who are <laughs> are crazy, and and spend way too much time on it. Everyone here on this podcast is that Avenger runs um, away because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he doesn't want to be part of this anymore. <laughs> it's not uh, a call. <laughs> Who, who who are here to see the game develop and to see the game progress and and read every month the report and go oh well, what does that mean that means that that could mean this and, and doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. and then there are the the average normal you know normies out there who are just like I buy a game to play it and to your average normal player who's like I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy the uh, the aspect of uh, very good he, he didn't he didn't forget to bring his towel which is very important um, I'm in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about bed sheets <laughs> yes oh gosh uh but but like the average person just it just just wants you know more bunker missions sure more yeah. uh, more more pirate missions they want something to do that's not the same thing they've been doing for three years so so it's it's that kind of combination so given all of this does should they stop sharing small details like that 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 no. nobody no yeah no okay. no no, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I think those Kotaku articles probably are good for the game in the long run. Yeah, actually, no, like, yeah, no publicity. I haven't heard about yeah. Star Citizen in forever. This guy's making a, like a complaint about bed sheets. Let me go look at Star Citizen. It's probably <laughs> driving some traffic towards the game where people are like, okay, who cares about the bed sheet thing? What Star Citizen is doing right now actually looks kind of cool now that I'm yeah. researching it a bit. Or you reminded me that Star Citizen's a game because I haven't like paid attention to it in like five years or something i bought so the game like, back in 2016 i'll come back and check it out holy there's everything's been added i really love this game now you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing happens more often than not right what do they say all press is good press or something like that you as know as long as they as long as they press. spell your name right you yeah. know all <laughs> press is good press as long as they spell your name right <laughs> I, I i think that what what we should take from the bed free bed sheet thing is is that um, if we really care about the game and if you're like somebody who's really interested in, in its uh, success and you want to see it become a, a fun game to play that, uh, you know, talking about bed sheet deformation is just a waste of time. I mean, the thing that we should really focus on is what, you know, level cap was just talking about really speaking about, you know, what are the most, uh, easy economical things that we can do to immediately improve the gameplay experience and hitting that home, um, with, with CIG because they're not perfect. I'm sure they're overlooking things. They need to set priorities and sometimes, they need the player base to tell them, you know, hey, we, we're seeing this weakness in this type of gameplay and we need that to be improved because right now it's just not working out. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, mm -hmm. big asks like, hey, you know, we want um, we want a whole salvage system today. That's not a realistic ask. But, you know, hey, you know, this uh, um, th this UI here is not very intuitive. Could you task somebody with changing the way it works, like adding a search feature? Great. Hey, thank you. Now I can search for the set of armor that I need without spending an extra five minutes. I appreciate that. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, think, I think we just need to be more more tactful and, and specific about our feedback and, and take a little bit more time with it. There is a good opportunity in here, though, for um, Star Kitten bedsheet referral. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like, oh, maybe I, maybe 15 referrals in, you I, get a Star Kitten. I was Star Kitten. I, yeah. I, I know you, you've, you've followed this, the game for a while, but you don't remember the Starfarer bedsheets 
um, oh. big thing. Yeah, where where everyone wanted the Starfair. Starfair had a specific bed sheet of this like this like design of of rocket ships and planets, and it was a very childlike <laughs> bed sheets. And everyone mm-hmm. was like, I want to be able to buy bed sheets and customize the bed sheets for my ships. So don't put it past CIG to microtransaction bed sheets in the future. Yeah. As long as I get a matching <laughs> copy in real life. <laughs> no, you're paying, okay, you're paying more money for bed sheets than you would in the real life, real life bed sheets. <laughs> my That's bed the sheet, only way this works. My bed sheet NFT. Yes. They need, they need to go to the Nintendo route where you buy the little spaceship model and then plug it into the USB thing. Into the controller. Yeah. <laughs> Bed sheets that you have to plug yeah. into the controller. Yeah. It's yeah. a little Pico. It's a little Pico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, you mentioned Morph, and this was kind of the overall theme regarding this bedsheet discussion and, and mm-hmm. what they could be doing to improve the game. There are tangible things that I think we all feel they could be doing to greatly increase the quality of the game for players who are playing right now. Now we know that 3.18 is gonna bring in some significant improvements with PES, um, allowing for more persistence amongst these these different objects and then server meshing in 4.0 with hopefully, maybe not at first, but expanded player counts and, and things like that. What are some of like the small, but maybe more significant things that you guys would like to see them doing to help the, the new player uh, specifically, and just players who are playing the game right now. Hmm. Nothing. It's perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. It's absolutely perfect. Not, no bad. <laughs> I, I think that I, the the way that the the game communicates the the world to us, I think, is ultimately the most important. Like, as a broader subject, and what they need to improve. If we want to get down into the more specific details, I mean, that map system is oh, oh god, it's so horrible. You know, like the mm-hmm. the UI like the UI for the waypoints on planets it's, it's just so difficult to use and and navigate mm-hmm. through when it's supposed to help a new player We're hundreds of hours in and we're still struggling with it. I'm still like why can't I jump to the thing that I want to jump to right now? Like why mm-hmm. are we mm-hmm. why are veteran players still struggling with just getting from point A to point B? It's mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, star map's terrible. <sighs> The hard part is more is less of uh, less of what needs to be done and more more of what do you think you could get done in with with, with what they have right now, you know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. we need a better map system, like hands down. But yeah. I don't know if that's possible until they uh, until it's they, they've they've kind of built out a new Moby glass. Heck, a new Moby glass. The Moby glass is garbage. It's 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 it could get, the entire UI for that that thing needs to get overhauled. Just to, mm-hmm. to to communicate what what is possible in the universe, and I'm a big lore guy, so I always like more stories and more ways of bringing people into the universe. But even now, it's like it, it's not much you can do, uh, other than maybe three seventeen two, maybe diversifying some missions a little bit more, uh, adding more missions, uh, making the locations slightly different. Um, now that you, I mean, especially with the tech that they have, like like. Uh, uh, the planetary nav mesh, just placing down a random location where AIs are, and you have to go pick up some boxes from a pallet in the middle of the forest, but it's covered by AI, would be more interesting and dynamic than what we have now. Uh, yeah, but it's hard to to do that with with the current tech. Right. Uh, with three eighteen, yeah. things like change box missions to be actual cargo missions. So you're actually loading in a certain, you know, take this five SCU of cargo and take it to this other location. That will make trading a lot more interesting because people will actually do cargo missions rather than just doing box missions because box missions are completely not worth the time investment that you have in them because they just, they seem long to, to make you not want to play them almost. They're like, they're in, in they're tedious. Well, they're and long not and worth they're the time. Yeah. Yeah, you don't make the so. like if the, if the box missions were two hundred fifty k a piece or something like people would be doing yeah. them all the time. Dang, but they're they're worth chump change and like you can just go do a bunch bunch of bounty missions and make three times the amount of money and it's more fun because exactly. it's like pew pew pew. Yeah, yeah. It, it basically, resp- if it was going to say one thing, respect our time more. If, uh, if CIG had sat down and played a, a mission and said, "Would I do this for money over the three hours of gameplay that I, that I have?" If the answer is no, then that you need to increase that. That who greenlit the cave rescue mission? That's what I want to know. Oh, the I cave want missions name? are just garbage. Oh, God. Oh. Cave rescue. The, the rescue, find the dead body in the cave mission. Like yeah. I want a name. I want it on Spectrum now. <laughs> like <laughs> put it up in lights. 
It's the worst <laughs> mission ever. People are like saying, oh, you just got to throw down flares to mark your path. No, like, no, 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 no. Like, and, and then what? You get 5K? Yeah. Like, there's definitely yeah. some content in the game where a new player could get into it and be like, oh, I'm on an extremely difficult, if not totally broken mission. And that's my first experience in Star Citizen. Um, and then, oh, hey, I'm on a cave on a planet with no atmosphere and I'm running out of water. Like, I mean, do you want that to be your first, your new player's first experience? Because by the time a new player figures out, they're putting all these implement, we've, I've had this discussion with A1 a bit too, is like, they put in all these punishing systems. You know, it seems like the punishment systems come into the game before a lot of the other core features that are going to be in the game that make those pun punishment systems balance out and work appropriately. So it's like, We've got a hydration system in the game right now. You run out of water super fast. Any new player coming in the game is going to be dehydrated probably before they even take off with their spaceship. So they're like working on like getting their spaceship ready to go or finding out where it is. And they're like, oh, you're dehydrated. Now you have to get out of your ship and go find out where to buy water and stuff. You know, it's like this. There's just a lot of like competing problematic systems in the game right now that are all kind of coming in in weird hodgepodge times. It needs a huge amount of work for an onboarding experience, like complete UI overhaul, new player missions, which is like, hey, do these sequence of four or five missions to get you used to the game. And those missions are all going to be uh, really well tested and quality assurance passes on them to make sure that they work and function every time. And a new player is going to be easily funneled into that. Like you don't have to do it if you're a veteran coming in, but like if you're a new player, it'll be like, come to the mission office and get your mission or whatever. And now get on your ship and go this way. And here's the marker and here's how you do that and stuff. There's nothing in the game like that. And it's, um, and I understand that they don't want to do too much of that if they're going to have to rebuild it. But I think we're kind of at the point where it's like, I think you can kind of make the new player onboarding experience right now and have it be worthwhile. Even if you wanted to rebuild it in five years from now, Spending the time and doing it now and having five years worth of players, like getting a nice onboarding experience and then rebuilding it five years later, I think that would be worth the time. You'd be bringing people in and having them uh, enjoy the game from the get-go rather than getting overwhelmed and being like, screw this, you know? And there was a comment on my stream the other day while watching me play saying like, uh, I really want to play this game. You make it look super awesome, but I'm afraid. You know, and I'm like, that seems like uh, that's totally reasonable. I think there's a lot of there. Most of the player base right now would not survive the current state of Star Citizen. Yeah. The people who are like, I love the idea of Star Citizen, but I don't want to go through all the stuff that you had to go through to like get where you are. You know? Yeah. The the first like five hours of this game, I think, are the best place they can make some improvements because once you once you're able to get into this game and and get an idea of what it is, it's so much easier to open you open your mind up to understand a little bit more about where it's going. I feel like if you get in and you play 30 minutes and it's terrible, you're never going to care about all the extra stuff, the base building, the economy, the cool missions, the multiplayer aspects that they try to sell you on. You're just going to say, yo, this sucked. I don't want to look into it anymore. But if they can get that like initial new player experience to work a lot better, I think people will be way more open to this game. Um, I'm going to uh, step in because I know I can already feel the comments in, in YouTube and the, see the chat and go, <laughs> but I don't want Star Citizen to be easy. I want it to be hard. Mm. And the answer my, is... My people, you can, my people. <laughs> yeah. But the answer is you can do both. You can make it so that early <gasps> on players can figure out how to play the game and then eventually throw the keys at their face and say, good luck, kid. Like, you know, you can hand walk them through, give them the training wheels for a couple of hours. And then once they look, like, OK, I got my feet wet. It's like, cool. Here's here's a here's a Vandal fleet. Good luck, kid. Bye bye. You know, um, because that will that will like let players go. Oh, I got to handle this game. This game isn't too difficult. And then just get smashed and go, oh, I got a lot to learn still, because that will get people engaged into the game. Like, There's so many people out there who will say, like, I like this game because it's difficult, because it has it has a challenging and doesn't yeah. hand, hold your hand, mm -hmm. which is fine. But. You don't want to, uh, to take a newborn baby and hand him an AK-47 and say, go to the front lines because they don't have no idea what's, what's going on. And that's effectively what you're doing is you're telling brand new people who don't even know how to move their character around or how to in access their, their inventory, anything. Uh, they're telling them to, to, to like, good luck with this universe and without any, any kind of basic understanding of the universe. You need that initial stage 
to yeah. get those you want to you want a learning curve right you want it to be like a yeah. nice smooth gradual line going up and right now it's just a wall right so it's yeah. like i mean you yeah. loaded up star citizen congrats now learn these 1000 items before you can have fun right like so yeah, you're like sounds like eve like, online yeah for sure i mean but eve even has a better onboarding experience with some like some newbie missions and mission giver stuff but it's also know? been out for 20 years right yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, i've played eve for a long time and they I feel like I've had this discussion with, with Eve online stuff where I was like, man, I was a rookie. I had like two start. Like I started, I quit, I started and I quit. And like a year later, I, I came back and something clicked and I just, I just kept flying. Right. But, um, it took a few tries before I kind of, it kind of hooked me. Right. And star Citizen is probably kind of in the same zone where you've got to get hooked. But once they get the hooks in, you're like, Oh, there's more to this. And then you kind of have more motivation to like learn and, exactly. and grow. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, there's it's an getting that initial for that. Yeah, I mean, it's like I was showing my four-year-old Minecraft the other day, right? And I hadn't played Minecraft since it like launched, so I forgot how to do it. And Minecraft's actually a little challenging to get into. Like you get in, you're mm -hmm. like getting killed by stuff. I'm like, how do I craft stuff? You know, it's like is this game that has infinite potential, but the actual learning and onboarding experience is actually pretty challenging. And I maybe that just goes hand in hand with these infinite potential games. Uh, yeah, which is what our right. citizens trying to be, right? Right. Well, I'm 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 glad that they have acknowledged that they're working on that uh, on the new player experience and making sure like those first few hours in game are actually going to be something to players. That's it's good to see, and I hope that that's something that we can learn more about in this next quarter, and maybe even something that they can start to put into the game in in three eighteen. Um, mm -hmm. But. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and say like we've been we've been at it for about an hour. Uh, for we those, even, we didn't even talk about the juicy the juiciest of the dramas yeah, right now with yeah. CIG giveth right. and taketh uh, away. Yeah. If, if I mean it's more if you are the one who's for anybody who doesn't know, everybody in this room is in different parts of the world. So we've got uh, Canada, Avenger One, Texas, Astro Pub, uh, California level cap. Washington, Washington level cap, Taiwan morphologist, and me in Turkey. So this is a crazy stretch of uh, time zones. I don't want to run morph too late, but if you're willing to, we could touch on the drama a little bit. Sure, yeah. Talk about no, I, tomorrow's tomorrow's Sunday for me, so I, I can sleep in a little bit late. So okay. it's fine. If we wanted to cover this topic here quick, and everyone's all right with it, I'm I, I could be on board. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 dive into it real quick. So, uh, Paul, why don't you get us started off? What what happened? And why is the I'll community the angry? Uh, see, I just screwed up. Um, <laughs> that's, I mean, huh? that's how everything starts. <laughs> yeah. uh, no way. But, uh, so CIG, uh, um, was going to give everyone money back from, uh, from their time in 317. So, and, and they've done this kind of thing in the past where like, they're going to do a wipe and they'll, they'll, they give a little bit of small stipend. Um, but when 317.2 launched, everyone was looking at their accounts. And even if people had only played a few hours in 317, they had millions of UEC. Some people had literal billions of UEC. Uh, and it seems like there was a mistake. Uh, I think one of the calculations someone someone did was that for one hour you played Star Citizen, they would give you one million UEC. And in, and when they what? when it should have been. Yeah. So it should have been. I've been robbed. It should have been one um, about like ten thousand or a hundred thousand was was the calculations, but they added too many zeros because you know CIG and their and their decimal point placements are 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 always the reasons why crazy things happen. That's literally how Jump Town happened was because they screwed up a decimal point. Um, but the, so there was a calculation error in there in there and and how how they did it. So CIG said this was an error. We didn't mean to give you all billions of UEC, so we're going to uh, we're going to wipe um, everything again and then re reissue all of the stuff. The problem was, was that people had already used that money to buy ships and they weren't going to wipe ships. And then people are also playing, um, you know, the, the latest event and now all of their stuff was wiped. So this uh, has caused a bit of a kerfuffle um, in the community uh, at the moment. And yeah, I got 15 million credits. I was like, this is this is too much for me. I don't know what to do with this money. The most I've ever like, I th I'm pretty sure the only time I've ever had more than that was when somebody gifted it to me. But the 
the major kind of disagreement that I'm seeing is like people understand uh, why I, I see a lot in the community of people going back and forth between like, I understand why everybody is mad, but why is everybody freaking out so much about money? Um, I actually haven't really seen, I haven't looked too much into it. This is after like 10 minutes of reading Reddit, which is maybe not yeah. the most straightforward representation of the community, but what have you been seeing on, on your own side in terms of the community and how people are feeling? Are they more angry about the fact that they're taking the money away or just that they were so bad about <laughs> communicating this whole thing? It's two sides. I think the biggest one I've seen is that the issue is um, that CIG, like people don't understand why they have to take the millions of credits away because they're like, you already gave us a million credits. You're going to wipe in 318. There is yeah, no economy. Bother? Why bother even wiping this again? Just let us have this for 318 because, you know, people are like, hey, I, I could I don't want to grind to get uh, an 890 jump. Now I can just buy an 890 jump and have fun. Uh, and then there are other people who are saying, you know, CIG screwed up their communication, which I don't I don't I don't know. Or and there's people claiming that like content creators were complaining they had too much money, so it's all the content creators' fault that they lost all this. So, you know, it's it's the typical gamut of, of Reddit and Spectrum comments. So, you know, well, isn't yeah. it like the more ships people buy with in-game currency, the less ships get sold with real money? That's if I guess that's are, an argument if people too. are running around with millions and millions of dollars, it's like, you know. Yeah, screws up their own economy a little bit. I, I was expecting, initially, I think most people were expecting all their money to be gone, right? They didn't announce that they were getting compensated yeah. until a little bit before the patch went live. Uh, so I, everybody was expecting to like start over from scratch. I had that mindset. And then I was actually a little bit disappointed when they said they were giving out money because I was like, oh, I was looking forward to like getting the Probably Mustang think. the Mustang Alpha yeah. and trying the yeah. newbie ship approach to like doing that, you know, because it's kind of a nice reset and sort of taking things back to basics. Then all of a sudden everybody's got millions upon millions. And then there's like drama because I'm like, oh, I played more PTU than I did play the PU and I didn't get rewarded for my PTU hours and whatever. But uh, it's just, it, it's like, I think people would have been fine if they had just wiped the money. And then didn't give anybody anything, but then they try to give people money and then they screwed it up because there's way too much money. Screws up the economy. I mean, how is Avenger 1 going to get people to fight him if everybody's got millions of dollars? Right? Because right? he's like, come beat me in the universe. You can have $10 million. And some noob's like, that's fine. I got $50 million. Like, I don't need the money. Nobody will fight him. He's going to be waiting out there at OM1 by himself. Uh, all stream and yeah it's really messed up <laughs> it's messed up the progression because i mean the reason for mining and and running and grinding these missions which can be fun uh, uh is kind of like gone and i i felt that uh when people since people can put money in your account now i think they limited that right we found that out the other day morph they limited yeah, it to like nine hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. really um, yeah what? yeah because they think they're they're trying to prevent people from giving uh, streamers or bigger or bigger players tons and tons of money. And when I got a whole bunch of money just gifted to me by <clears throat> random people, oh, I was yeah. like, "Oh, I guess I'm just not gonna like grind these missions anymore." Because why? Why should I? You know? I was sort of like, "Oh, I guess this, this part of the gameplay is sort of like over for me now, and I have to find a different aspect." of star citizen to like enjoy because i was enjoying grinding for ships you know it was kind of it was kind of fun to like figure out what the most efficient way was even though the game is you know only partially like implemented and whatnot yeah is there a cooldown yeah, I, for how much money you can get set you know i don't know we didn't test it I don't, i'm not sure there is probably should test that you can <laughs> just keep to, doing just pass it, it back it, and forth between each other until it stops one. working <laughs> yeah you it know, was you know i actually it's kind of sorry go ahead tomato no, I was just going to say it It really, like, it was uh, one problem after another problem after another problem. Like, the, the, the initial problem of there being a wipe, like you said, nobody really would have cared that much about. Yeah, they took away the money. Yeah, it's annoying because they're wiping progress. A lot of people reference that as a reason why they don't want to play it. And another wipe in 318 is like, it, it kind of diminishes a lot of people's reason to go and play 317 too. Um, but then they go and they're like, you know, they, they, they allowed the people who got in the game early, who were able to take care of that money and like use it to buy stuff. Oh, you get to keep the stuff you bought, but all the people who didn't get into the game yet, 
mm, sorry, you're out of luck. Or like the fact that people went and made a bunch of money before they decided to, you know, turn it back and then they lost that money too. There's just like, there were so many little edge cases that got introduced because of this one little problem that made it so much bigger than, than it needed to be. Um, and I'm just wondering like, how, how did that happen? Like <laughs> everybody says interns, but like realistically speaking, like what happened? It was just Someone's good. Just... It was good intentions gone wrong. Which yeah. is, you know, yeah. I, I can't really be angry at CIG for it. They tried to do a good thing. They screwed it up. People are mad. They'll get over it. What do you I mean? don't think it's be gonna... angry. Quit the game. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be an issue beyond like, you know, the next couple of days. Wolf. Really? The only thing I saw was okay. that some people were saying it's now resetting their account balance to 20 K every time they log back in. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that it, is. Yeah. it is doing that. So they got to fix that up. one. They got to fix that one. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as long as they fix that and whatever, I don't think it's going to be an issue for too long. They screwed it up. No. Some people buy 890 jumps before they set their account back. And some people didn't, you know, and there's going to be a little bit of anger, but you know, there, it, it'll be forgotten in a week. But those people with their book of grudges are opening up and being like, CIG screwed up this reset right. and this it's going to add that. And someone's, we're going to hear this about it in, you know, six months. Someone's going to bring it up again. And because it's going to be a Kotaku article written about it in about five minutes that already hasn't already done so because some poor writer who has, who makes less than minimum wage needs to buy ramen this week. And so Star Citizen screwing something up is like, yes, I can get money now. So Easy money. that's. The, it's just it's but it's it's a nothing in the long run. And I, I don't I don't agree yeah, that it's yeah. like a CIG communication issue because it's like CIG is actually over communicating. This is the first time CIG has ever actually apologized and admitted they screwed up because usually it's like a year later that they go, oh, yeah, we may have messed up. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> CIG <laughs> refuses to take responsibility for their own screw ups when they screw up all the time. Yeah. And, and, you know. They're like, hey, so remember eight months ago down. when we told you that thing was going to be there? Yeah, so l l we'll explain yeah. now. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Okay. About we'll 20 in, 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 a, in an essay okay. from the, from the, uh, yeah. <laughs> About 20. Oh, oh, that roadmap. Oh, God. Oh Every God. time. No. <laughs> I bring it up. I bring it up far too often for my own health, but it's just like, I cannot get that out of my mind. I'm like, what the heck, guys? That was a rough one. <laughs> that but, was. But yeah, yeah, it's we've all been following this game for long enough to know that generally every quarter there's there's something. Um, and mm -hmm. every year there's definitely like some big thing. I'm not sure if that's happened yet. That might have been the roadmap round uh, change actually earlier this year. But there's like you did you, any of you ever used to go on Reddit? This was more common, I think, back in like 2000. 18 19 i would see it a lot when people would post that picture that was like the circle of the community it would be like the hype for the mm -hmm. for the content drop and then like the i don't know there were different sections people of it bored. and you could you can see yeah. every single quarter how we would go through this cycle and you know it just it keeps happening well, it's not it's not unique to star citizen right it happens with yeah. every game yeah like mm -hmm. the hype builds up people enjoy it and then people get bored people complain about bugs not being fixed or other issues not being added then they they the hype up for the next patch and then repeat the cycle. It just it's a cycle that happens all the time. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's you know, the latest. It, yeah, I, I think you know I, I to kind of I'm not gonna say I'm defending CG. They made a mistake, and and I think uh, and and I'm glad that they they admitted it. But from their perspective, I think it does make sense to to try to take that money back and and give the mm -hmm. correct amount because. Well, uh, well, there is an economy. An economy, I agree. It is the only incentive a lot of people have to play, and they do need people to continue playing to test the game. And ultimately, people playing sell more ships. I mean, that that is true. It, fun it keeps the project funded, so uh, that's important. But I also think that they may be also always keeping their eye on Quanta and how people buying and selling stuff is affecting um, their plans for the future. So it could disrupt uh, some parts of of you know their the feedback that they're expecting to get going into 318 or whatever they need to change. So it's unfortunate, but probably necessary. It happens. Yep. I expect, yep. I expect another kerfuffle before the end of the year. So we'll keep an eye out for it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. again, thank you guys for coming to this. This is, uh, this is cool. I like this. Uh, want to, want to do one of these every month, just have a group of people in here who, uh, we can pick their brains on specific topics and talk about star citizen with a little more casualty and a little more um, open conversation than I get to do on, on the normal podcast. So 
thank you for all for coming in. We've all, uh, I've, I've had conversations with all of you about this game and I knew that you all would be really fun to have in here for a nice little panel, but it's nice that we were all able to get together, especially with the time differences. Um, was there anything else that anybody wanted to close off with, like mention or talk about before we wrap things up? I, I think I, it's, I, <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Just go around. I, I'll, I'll, I can just start real quick, which is just you go. Paul. This is the yeah. best. This is this is uh, this patch has a ton of content. Like like we will talk about you know week to week, month to month, month other kind of stuff. This patch has a ton of content. Is it enough? Maybe not for everyone, but if you were one of those people who's been like, hey, I'm looking uh, like is the game? I haven't been played the game in a year. Should I come back? The answer is, yeah, it's not a bad, 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 bad place to come back to in terms of just the player uh, uh, up amount to the, the new missions that are coming out. It's some cool stuff. It's a nice little couple minutes here. And hopefully Star Citizen continues this path going forward until we can actually sit there and go, this is a, a game that, you know, a normal person can just buy off the street and go, hey, this is fun. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just, yeah, kind of, I just wanted to end the podcast, too, with that same uh, mentality is like, yeah, we got caught up in the bed sheets and the money issue a little bit, but 317.2 <laughs> is honestly one of the best patches I can remember for the game uh, in quite some time. Um, there's so much stuff going on, it, despite the dumb AI and Siege of Orse, and it's still really cool going there and experiencing the event, and and uh, doing all the new mission stuff and the derelict stuff. There's tons of cool content. There's balance updates. The new, the amount of players is crazy. It's it's actually a really exciting time for the game. And the fact that 3.18 is going to go into uh, avocados soon is uh, pretty exciting. And so it's like, I mean, that's going to be the next major push. So we're right. We just got a whole bunch of cool stuff. And there's potentially a whole bunch more cool stuff going into PTU in the near future. So... I mean, yeah, it's exciting, and despite uh, grudges with the game, uh, there's this is a very good time for it right now. The book of grudges. Mm. <laughs> uh, I will say this, though. Yeah, go ahead. To everybody watching, there's more people on the server now, which means you're going to learn, and you're going to learn the hard way if you don't train. So now's the time to start training. I know I always see through like a PvP lens, right? And I understand that. That's like my niche, right? But even if it's against NPCs, you would do well to learn to master the ship you're flying. And that, that means learning the fundamentals, like the basics, right? And with more people, more danger, it's just going to get more dangerous from here, right? So spend some time. Learn as mm -hmm. much as you can. Develop yourself as a pilot. And it'll make the game more fun for you too. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you still won't beat avenger one <laughs> <laughs> maybe if i'm not in the ship like it's shot i've tr i've tried i've tried some some crazy members of my own community are like hey avenger one's in this uh, this server let's go fight him in jump time i'm like you just want to oh. die oh boy does it sound like it's a fun fun uh, a, fu a fun aspect i could take you in warmer i could take you in cold <laughs> <laughs> uh morph was there anything else you wanted to to leave us with yeah well, I think everybody kind of kind of ended this on a, a more positive note, and I think that that's kind of how I want to feel. Or I want to leave you guys as well, because I, I absolutely agree that this is one of the best patches that we've had in a really long time. The AI are working, you know, for their faults, they're working better than they ever have ever since we had AI. I mean, they're actually responding, and, and that, is, that is not something that we, I could say that we've had in the past. Um, and you know the, the the improvement with net coding is just is it's been vastly improved in 3.17.2, and that has been the, the crux of a lot of issues. And of course, the cap increase is actually amazing. So there's a lot of great stuff to to be happy about in this patch. And yeah, 3.18 is just around the corner for PTU, and I'm super excited to see you know how PES works and be a part of the testing for that because I am a nerd about Star Citizen, and I am excited about the nitty gritty details and being a part of that. Yeah, and not to be a always looking at the next thing kind of person, but like that's what Star Citizen teaches us. But I am super excited to see what comes out of the testing of 318. I was hoping that we would be seeing it earlier by now. Like we would, it would have already been confirmed to be in testing for Ivacati. But I'm gonna mm -hmm. be keeping my eye out this next month because, yeah, 318 is. I don't know. We're getting into this 
area of development now with Star Citizen where it feels like everything's up in the air. Like this is where the game's future starts to be defined with server meshing and Pez and Quantum mm -hmm. and all these significant moves they're making, all these new players coming in. So it's an exciting time. I'm looking forward to the next year. Yep. Awesome. Thank well, thank you all for coming to this. Um, everybody who is watching this after the fact, it will be posted to the main channel. But if you would like to check these out live, I'm streaming them on Twitch on my own channel, twitch.tv slash Space Tomato Gaming. And if you'd like to go and check out these other fine gentlemen in their content, I'll give you guys one more, one more chance to do a little plug, let people know where they can find you, and then we'll wrap up. We'll do the, we'll do the clockwise thing again. So just, you know, we got this. More. Paul, go ahead. No, no, you, 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 you start. Wait, I, or I start. What? No, okay, fine. Sorry. I'll go. It's, it's different on our screens. Than, than, I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm, okay, no, yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the uh, the. Oh, never mind. Um, all right, yeah, no, I'm morphologist, and I, I I don't know what clock clockwise means. Apparently, no. I'm kidding. Um, you can find me on YouTube and Twitch, uh, but maybe you won't because I clearly look like an idiot. So let's move on to the more intelligent people here. Uh, go ahead, Amy. <laughs> to to uh, clarify, it, on our clock. screens, it's I'm in the top left. Yeah. So like I oh, would yeah, be the yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, so, um, go level cap. Yeah, yeah. Check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash level cap gaming. I've been streaming Star Citizen a bit more and uh, making gameplay and occasional guy content because it takes forever to make it. Uh, I'm Paul, Berserker One, Batman Shelly. Uh, I run the Astro Pub on Twitch, uh, the Astro Pub Live on YouTube, and the Astro Historian. Uh, I do a lot of content on Star Citizen. I do uh, podcasts and guides and, and update, lore update videos and news update videos and lore content. So you can check me out on any of those those things. I kind of do streams weekly and at least two or three videos a week. So um, I hate my life sometimes, <laughs> especially <laughs> with Star Citizen. My name is Avenger One. You can find me on Twitch at Avenger underscore underscore one and on YouTube at Avenger One. We do training tutorials on understanding basic flight combat maneuvering up to advanced as well. We facilitate a culture of 1% improvement every day. I need that. We do 2% on my channel. So if you want to improve 2% <laughs> every day, <laughs> you, want to be, <laughs> if you want the real quality. <laughs> I just try not to die. So like, you know. I have, I have like a death counter on the bottom of my stream and it's actually stopped going up as fast ever since I put it there. So if you want to learn how to die, at least not as much, I am also there. I'm Space Tomato. I've been your host and uh, this will be happening every month. So make sure to come and check it out next time. I'd like to thank everybody who supported this while it was going on, followed, subscribed and um, just showed up and watched. Thank you so much, everybody. We will, well, I guess I will see you next month with the next roundtable. Catch you later. <laughs>